water and brings down all the minerals from the mountain down to the valley and that's where you can grow. It's a fertile soil. It's fertile. So that's why he's able to say, even when I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, Because if you can get through the storm that you're in right now in the valley, you're going to have fruit. Something good is coming. Something is going to grow in that lousy valley because why? That is where the soil is the most fertile. That's where you're going to grow. That's where you're going to feel the power of God. Like my friend sitting in a hospital in Burnaby, he's in the valley of the shadow of death right now. But I tell you, when he comes out of there, he's going to be fruiting. He's going to be happy. He's going to be changed. Amen? Hallelujah. God is in charge and is with us 24-7. 24-7. Better than 7-11. 7-11 is only 7-11. God is 24 7, man. Come on. You know, sometimes we forget that. God's got a better store. Amen. Jesus is with us all the time. The Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Jesus is with us all the time. That's why David says, His rod and His staff, which means the power and the protector, the rod and the staff, the power and the protector is with us all the time. He's, he says, He's, what did he say? He says, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. What did Jesus say to the disciples? He says, when I go, right, there will be the Holy Spirit that's going to come and comfort you. Does that sound familiar? I told you every word in the Bible is prophetic. Okay? <laughs> if a shepherd has a rod, is to whack the lion. His staff is to lead the sheep. That's why it's the power and the protector. His rod and the staff. That's why we can fear no evil. That's how we can fear no evil. Now, verse 5 cranks it up a little higher. Verse 5, this is. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil and my cup runs over. This verse is amazing. How many of you know God is counterculture? He's totally counter. His is a kingdom culture. Tell me, which army in the world would prepare a table of feast in the presence of their enemy? That's like a death sentence, right? That's how we all get recruited and then we're all going to go to Syria. And then, and then your commander goes, okay, this is your assignment. Oh, what's our assignment? So, yes, sir. Then what's your assignment? Your assignment is to just go in the middle of the field there. You see those enemy parked there? You open up one of these tables and start eating. <laughs> you be turning around and walking away. Right? You look at your commander and then you go, see ya. We're not having any guns, no. You have any special M16 or something? No. What do we have? Sandwiches. What else? Drinks. Go set up the table. The reason why you run is because you look at your commander, you don't trust him. But when you look at your commander and you see Jesus, different story. He says, son, go set up the table in the midst of your enemy. I tell you, your enemy will start trembling. They expect you to come in Man 16, man. They expect you to come in some grenade launchers or some, you know, I don't know what they call rocket propeller launchers or whatever. You come with sandwiches, 7 Eleven, and uh, I don't know, Subway sandwiches. <laughs> Foot long. It's better than M16. Only when your commander is Jesus. 
and you can trust. It's a sure way plan, right? It's a perfect plan. You know how I know? Even the storm behaves in the presence of Jesus. Sickness behaves in the presence of Jesus. Death behaves in the presence of Jesus. Demons behaves in the presence of Jesus. So which army would not be here? None. None. The demonic spirit of the Philistine army and Goliath behave when David went to fight in the name of Jesus. That's why a rock, just a small rock and a slingshot, killed a ten-foot giant who is a seasoned very seasoned warrior was laughing at him. Jesus is Lord over every situation and circumstances. If you're feeling you're in your army's camp right now and that you lack weapons and they all got like a rocket propelled grenade and you are just with a water pistol, you know what a water gun is? I used to play with those when I was a kid, you know. From like the dollar store when there was not a dollar store. <laughs> when you have Jesus and you have a water pistol, hell has no fury, nothing. You can go into hell with the water pistol and you put out the fire. That's how confident you will be when you have Jesus with you. You don't need no M16. When we're going through a storm, know that we are to rest in Jesus. That's what resting means. Resting is not that there's never going to be a storm. Some people say, oh, wow, I'm a Christian now. How come my life is worse than before? People tell me that all the time. I just met two people that I had to counsel over. That was Wednesday night. You guys are praying for me. I had to counsel over the sister. She goes, oh, man, I'm so distant from God. I don't think I'm... I want to be with God anymore. And I told her, <clears throat> we are conscripted into this warfare, not by choice, because we are chosen. It's like a military setup. You know, I like the way Brother Vaughn says it. It's like, it's like in the army. Everybody has a different role. One may be to shoot your M16, one may be to drive the tank, one may be have to, I don't know, parachute down from the airplane. I told her, sister, my job is to defuse bomb. The pastor's job is to defuse the bomb that the enemy has set in you. Here, between your ears. So when I sat down with her, I start to tell her who she is in Christ. And more so than that, I heard from God exactly what is going on in her life. And I kept telling her that. And the more I talked to her, the more the bomb got diffused. And finally, the final fuse was something she was wearing, a pendant that was demonic that was, she was wearing on her neck. And I said to her, which I said to her as a sister, would you be willing to take that thing off your neck. And she goes, oh no, I can't, I can't. This is so precious. My friend made this for me. I said, who, which friend? Oh, I don't remember. I said, oh, okay. So where did you get this from? Oh, I don't know. I said, would you be willing to just take it off? And she goes, I guess. And she took it off. That was the fuse. She felt so much light that she go, what's going on? How come I feel different? I said, because take a good look at that thing. Look closer. I, said, I can't see nothing. Use your spiritual I, I can't see nothing. I said, I'm going to show you the logo of Google Chrome. What do you see? Oh my goodness. She goes, that's right. 666. Six, six. That pattern is the same as the Google Chrome logo. 
That's it. And then Brother Vaughan shows up and says, Hey, great. He's always here to, he has a different job in the army to throw away <laughs> the ball. <laughs> Last time we were somewhere else, he had to throw away some huge food dog, uh, those Chinese uh, crazy feng shui thing. It was the size of, I don't know, this big thing, marble. Poor guy is so strong, he's just carried all the way to the river and dump it. Then, it doesn't always have to come in a big size thing, it can come in a pattern, whatever you wear. And then you feel so depressed. Depression was gone in Jesus' name. We are all in this warfare. But when you have Jesus, everything behaves. They all behave. So resting never means no storm will come. Resting means even when the storm comes, know that we are not in the storm, we are in Jesus. That's what true resting means. Even when you are in the storm, the storm is not in you, Jesus is in you. And you are in Jesus. And you can face that storm. That's how we are able to relax. You know the word table, you prepare a table, the word table in Hebrew from the word sulhan literally means a skin or a leather mat. It's a mat. It's not some nice table like this. It's a mat. You go into the midst of the enemy and you lay your mat down like you're going to a picnic. That's how confident you are. You, you, your soul hand, you lay on the floor and then you start having your sandwiches and your coffee and the enemy is going, oh my goodness. They, they, they didn't see my sword, it's so sharp. Who cares? Who cares? I have not seen anybody going to the beach and complain yet. Like, you know, you go to a picnic, I, mean, I haven't seen one yet. But let me tell you something. If I tell you to go into the presence of your enemy, surrounded by your enemy, and have a picnic, unless you're resting in Jesus, I think you're freaking out. <laughs> when we were in Bangalore, in India, the, the pastors there said to us, why are you going to Kerala? And we said, why? Just 95% Hindus there. And then they'll show you a gun and a knife and they say, which one you want to die by? I say, I rebuke that in the name of Jesus. God is before me, who can be against me? I can say that because I know he prepares a table even in the midst of my enemy. I can do that. It's easy to prepare a table far away from your enemy and say, God is great, God is great. Easy. But let you lay your table in the midst of your enemy and say, God is great. Even the enemy can say that their yeah, God is great. Did you know that? When they kill people in the, in the Middle East, they say that their demonic God is great. How can we, who have the God Almighty, not go into the presence of the enemy and say, God is great. I don't have to fight you. I come to love you. Because my Jesus loves me. And that's the reason why I can love you. Because he first loved me. I don't know how to love, but God first loved me. He showed me. He showed me on the cross how much he loved me. People need to hear that. People need to hear that. In verse 5 it says, You anoint my head with oil, my cup runs over. Anoint means to be blessed with a chosen gift or given as a gift. An 
And then are we supposed to sit around? Huh? <laughs> Here, bless and then sit around. I'm resting. No. No. Our head is anointed and our cup runs over. It runs over. It means when we are blessed, we have to bless others. The blessing is so much in our life, it is running over. Did you check your bank account lately? And check your expenses at home? Your, if you, some people, their expenses is not matching their bank account in the negative way. But most of us, we have so much in our account. Yet we're not sharing a single dime with anybody else. We see somebody hungry on the roadside. All we can think of is, man, that guy is so lazy. He doesn't want to work. Maybe he can't. Maybe you're working to help him. How many people always tell me, they say, hey, you say that your God is so good, how come the world is suffering? Hmm? They tell me that. Your God is so good. Now how come the whole world is suffering? Why can't he just make a miracle? Snap his finger. The whole world is not hungry anymore. I said he did. He made you. You are the miracle. We are the miracle. We are sat here to have the anointing, the blessing of God. And our cup is overflowing. If you say, Pastor Tom, my bank account is zero. In fact, I owe more money. How can I be blessing? Because when you look at your commander, you don't see Jesus. That's why your bank account is empty. That's why you cannot walk into the camp of your enemy and say, I'm sending out my soul. Huh? I'm going to have bread. I don't have bread right now. I just have my mat. I'll roll it up. Because God will multiply something and it's going to be bread and drink it. Because He said so. He said so. His word. He cannot lie. When you turn and turn around and around and around looking for solution on your own, you have to stop. You have to start looking up. When Abraham was looking around, 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 and going, no way, man, I'm almost a hundred years old. How can I have a child? God said, look up, Abraham. Look up. Now see how many stars there are. As many stars are there, your children will be. You need to look up. Jesus says, do unto the least of these people and you will do unto me. Do is a verb. It's an action. Resting is doing God's work according to His will. Did you know that? Resting from flesh and working in the Spirit. You know, Jesus, when his uh, mom and his brothers came, and one time he was preaching, you know, he was preaching, and then all the mom and the brothers came, and then the disciples came to him and said, Hey, Rabbi, Rabbi, your mom and your brothers, they want to ask you something. You know what Jesus, he turned and spoke in heaven's language, he goes, Who is my mom? Who are my brothers? You know, that's shocking. You who do the will of God, my moms, my brothers, and my sisters. That means you who know how to rest in me, he's saying, when you're doing the will of God, you are resting. Because why? Jesus is resting. When you're doing the will of God, you're saying, in Jesus' name. 
You're never doing in Tom's name or Alan's name. You're doing in Jesus' name. That means Jesus is rested on the Father's right side. You are also resting. You're just finishing out the process of resting. Are you getting me? God is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. He is the Lion and the Lamb. See how Psalm 23 started with a beautiful scene and then it took us through the valley of the shadow of death, through the enemy camp, and we died to a point where we're blessed and we're blessed, putting our blessings into action. Now in verse 6, it says, this is the best part. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Now, amazing. You know, God, His story is not like the cheap soap opera that you see in the, on TV, you know, the soap opera. <laughs> it's always a, a cliffhanger. God is not into cliffhanger. <laughs> He's the Alpha and Omega. He's Alpha and Omega. I told you last week, Jesus always saves the best for last. Like what he did at the wedding at Cana, when he turned water into wine. He saved the best for last. It is so beautiful. Verse 6. His goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Folks, this is God's guarantee. It is His guarantee. Right? Well, we're here on earth doing His will. I like that. Now, Imagine an angel following you everywhere. Right? He says here, His goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. So imagine an angel following you everywhere. You know, first time I, I was doing God's will, when I got touched by God four years ago, I did not understand that an angel is assigned to me like a huge one. Until one day, my son Jordan, he was sitting with me in the living room and he goes, he's, we were talking, and he goes, Dad, Dad, oh, he's obviously pointing past me, behind me, he's, Dad, 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 he said, what? What? There is an angel behind me. There is? What does he look like? He goes, He's in a fetal position and his back is touching the ceiling. He's a big guy. That explains why, you know, when I used to go do ministry and I come home and I open the door and Coco is so happy to see me. And then all of a sudden, meow, sounds like he, you know, somebody had just whacked Coco. Coco gets it all the time. I don't understand. Like, if you're Coco, you're five feet away from me. How is it that you're like, with tails between the legs. Why? Because the angel is probably going boom, move aside. We have things to do. <laughs> Poor Coco. I did not understand that until Jordan goes, Dad, there is an angel behind you. His goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. You know why? Because the angel is following the Holy Spirit in you. Don't be so full of yourself. Am I an angel? No, it's the Holy Spirit in you that the angels are assigned to do works for His will. Alright? So you want angels? You do God's will. <laughs> if you're doing your own thing, okay, every day, uh-uh. The best part is the Omega part, you know, Alpha or an Omega. Alpha means the beginning, Omega means the end. The Omega part is like this, for, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. That last verse there in Psalm 23. We will all dwell in the house of the Lord forever, amen? That's never going to change, by the way. Just in case you have wrong believing, you think if I say, you know, maybe I'll go to hell. Listen, you don't know God yet. You don't know who your commander is. 
Then never going to happen because why? Because God's words in Romans 8 1 says, Now therefore, there is no more condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus and for those who don't operate in the flesh but operate in spirit. And in another version, it says, Now there is no more punishment. Finish. There is no more punishment. In Corinthians, God said, I will remember your transgression and your sin no more. Oh my goodness. If you've gone somewhere and come from a church where he says if you sin you go to hell, they don't know who their commander is. Jesus went to the cross once and for all time. He's never going to keep going up on the cross. When he went to the cross, your sins, past, present, future, erase, gone, finished. That's how he can say it is finished. You can't say it is finished when it's not finished. It is finished. Take that out of your head and rest in God. Eternal life is ours because Jesus lives eternally. He's living with you. Praise God. Amen. So today, I just encourage you to learn to rest in Him. Let your cup overflow means that if you have some spare change in your pocket, when you see the homeless, give it to the homeless. Right? Resting is doing God's will. It's not lazing around, it's doing God's will. If your cup is overflowing and you feel the anointing that God has given you, the blessing is just overflowing, do something. It's His, His prompting to tell you to do something. His will, when we do His will, His will is executed from a position of rest. It's not striving. Here's another thing. Some people say, Oh, I got to go to the soup kitchen to serve on Thursday night. No, you no, not got to. You don't have to got to. You've been given the privilege to do so. I got to go to church. No, you've been given the privilege to come to church. And change your thinking. Church is not a chore. Soup kitchen is not a chore. God will feed those people with or without you. It is a privilege to walk in His will and have the angels follow you. That is resting from a position of rest. That means Jesus is doing it, not you. Rest. Come on, take it easy, right? <laughs> that comes from his abundance. So that's all I want to tell you today. Do you receive this? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So we're going to.